So when we originally um, envisioned Moto or conceptualized Moto, the idea was to take 3D content creation to a new level in terms of artist friendliness, to create a fully featured modeling, sculpting, UV mapping, animation, lighting, texturing, rendering, simulation system, but present it to the users in a way that it's approachable, it's accessible, and highly productive. I definitely consider myself as, as an artist, but as a designer, the poster child of somebody who doesn't have the patience and doesn't have the time or even the interest in a way to learn software. I just want to get to that beautiful end result. And having explored all these other pieces of software, Moto really was the best answer for me. And consequently, it's the one that I do suggest um, to students and to colleagues. As a designer, I think in 3D a lot. So doing a 2D drawing is sort of only giving you know, that one information from that one angle, where when I do it in 3D, I can have control over all the different angles. The world is changing, so uh, to me now, it helps me incredibly to uh, model something the way I design it, uh, right as almost the same step. You know, it's incredibly professional and, and just amazing to see simple models or whatever you're modeling rendered in the way a motor does. A lot of directors want to see not just a, you know, not just a drawing like we used to do, but seeing it in the context of what it's going to look like in a final frame on the screen. Getting a lens on there quickly to give, um, to give an accurate idea of, okay, what's, what's this going to look like? You know, is it going to fit? So yeah, those, answering those kind of questions early on, it gives the director a good idea of what it's going to look like in the final frame of the film. It also starts to um, ask and answer questions that we're going to have to tackle in the shot production process, you know, the visual effects shot production process. My first full car I modeled in Moto was the uh, hover or the cars for Total Recall. So interacting with the director, he likes to walk around and give his input. So um, it was very uh, fast and gratifying to uh, have within a day or two, something he could look at. I can give them a, an idea, and a range of ideas, and show it to them very early on in a way that represents the final product. It's still very much for me in sketch form, but to most people, because the rendering that Moto can yield, it gives you the world space and the equipment as a virtual photographer to be able to take your designs, put them in it, and have it look photographic. Well, I think you basically have to think like a photographer when you're setting up your scene. Um, you start with that, but then you, um, then you really get into the, uh, the efficiency of 3D, especially with, with product shots. You know, you have a virtual studio that you can always come back to and it'll be exactly the same. And we wanted to change the question from can you do to how quickly can you do. One of the great benefits about using Moto for our animation projects is the speed of the workflow. Our usual animation projects have a much faster turnaround than a uh, film industry type of project. We'll have to release an animation in two or three months from start to finish. Having a small team to create those animations is really important that we are able to hit the ground running, get the first pass of the animation complete really quickly, and go into texturing, lighting, and really have that whole process happen in about a month or two from start to finish. Fast preview is awesome. It's so fluid. Yeah, I just, because I just finished rendering this, this last couple of days, it's just, it's like, just grab it, move it while it's, while it's previewing the whole thing. And, it, and as soon as there's a little pause, what takes over to recognize you're wanting to move the model, super fluid, right in the camera preview window, which in the past you couldn't, you know, you couldn't get away with that. When I set up stuff before, it would be like hundreds of lights, you know, doing little things, but then I could just put one or two lights, maybe like a card that has a luminosity on it, and it's like, it looks great. It looks like a professional did, not me. <laughs> For my work, because I'm from the Nordic countries and we have smaller studios, so we have like a, a, a lot less artists working on the project. So we have to have a single artist who go through the whole look development process from the beginning of texturing and modeling all the way to the final uh, look development product that is the commercial, of course. So Modo is like the perfect for that. It's, it's good modeler, good texturing, 
tool, UVs and renderer, and then you get it all done in one package really fast. Moto is fun. And one of the things is, is people will tell you people use Moto is they like using Moto. If they have a choice, they use Moto because if you're in Maya all day or you've been using Lightwave for six or seven years, jumping in a new program is fun. And uh, Moto was just enjoyable. It was a fun way to model. It was a little bit different, uh, sort of a unique sort of futuristic interface. And you would just find a reason to use it. Its selection tools are fantastic. It's, I find it very fast compared to other modelers. Um, everything I need to get to is, is very quick to access, doesn't take too many clicks. We pretty much use Moto on every job that requires any sort of asset prep. So, you know, Iron Man has very tight seams and very close panels and everything, so a lot of things have to be adjusted. Creative modeling, let's call it that, uh, because you, I'm finding my design by modeling at the same time. So I think that is something completely new because immediately I can go into 3D modeling with Moto. And uh, because it's so quick and so intuitive, you know, it's, it, it's perfect. <laughs>